secondary dominant chords are very vital in reharmonization and improvisation so far as jazz music is concerned today i'm going to teach you what secondary chords secondary dominant chords are how to apply them in improv and in reham so before then what are secondary dominant chords in my own definition secondary dominant chords are chords which are in linear relationship with the major diatonic chord of the dominant key. So I will explain myself. Let's take key C for example. All right. So in the definition, I said secondary dominant chords are chords which are in linear relationship with the major diatonic chords of the dominant key. Now, what is the dominant key of C? That is J. Right now, G is the dominant key of C. So, what are the diatonic chords of G? They are chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, seven, and then eight. Right, but I said major diatonic chords. So, what are the major diatonic chords here? When we play chord one, it's already in major chord. When we play chord two, it's in minor, so you have to make it major. So whenever you meet, whenever you play the minor, which is chord two or chord six, you have to make it major. So I'm playing chord two, but I have to make it major. Major that only chords of the dominant key. Now chord three of the dominant key is this, which is supposed to be major, right? And then chord four is already in major, chord five is already in major, chord six in minor but I have to make it major and then the seven is in diminished but I have to make it also a major chord then back to the uh, octave right now these are the diatonic major chords of the dominant key dominant key right but what about the linear relationship you are talking about here the linear relationship is talking about when you play chord one of G. It's going to lead you to chord 1 of C, which is the relationship of um, octave and let's say tonic and dominance. So this is the dominance of C relative to the tonic. So when you play chord 1 of G, they're going to play it to relatively to chord 1 of C when you play chord 2 chord 2, which is supposed to be major, chord 2 of G is going to lead you linearly to chord 2 of C, chord 2 of C, when you play chord 3, chord 3 of G, which is supposed to be major, not minor, because of the definition, then it's going to lead you also to chord 3 of C. Let's continue. Chord 4 is going to lead you to chord 4 of C. Chord 5 of G is going to lead you to chord 5 of C. Chord 6 of G is going to lead you to chord 6 of C. And the chord 7 is also going to lead you to chord 7. So the whole summary of the issue here is 1 is leading to 1. Chord 2 is leading to chord 2, chord 3 leading to chord 3, chord 4 leading to chord 4. That's the meaning of linear relationship. So when you play the chord 1, you have to lead it to the chord 1 of C. Chord 2 leading to the chord 2 of C. Chord 3 leading to the chord 3 of C. Chord 4 of G, dominant key, leading to the chord 4, 5 leading to the 5, 6, leading to the 6, 7, leading to the 7, then you are done with it. So this is how you derive your secondary dominant chord. So these are, you get everything.